Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today, tonight, about utility plugins. And um, utility plugins are uh, something that's been in WordPress for a while. Um, but hasn't been, haven't been widely used and have gained more traction recently. And um, so I'll get into it. Uh, just a little bit about myself, my company. Um, my name, again, is Josh Fialkoff, uh, just like it sounds, it's spelled. Um, and I run a company called Forward Jump Marketing, and um, we build WordPress websites for uh, small and medium businesses, size businesses, and nonprofits. And then we also do uh, SEO and online advertising and some other fun things. And oh, this is uh, my team. And Tony is right here in the front row if you want to talk to him. Um, and now on to utility plugins. So um, I did a lot of Googling before I did this presentation. And here's what I found. Um, this was a good quote about utility plugins. So essentially, a utility plugin is taking all the stuff that you would put in your functions file and moving it into other files, into uh, other files to make it easier to organize your theme file. Um, and so I just want to give a note, if you're not a theme developer, that's perfectly fine. I am not a developer. I like to tell people that I am a hacker and that when I am coding, you should make lots of backups and watch out. But I know enough about code to be dangerous, and that's about it. Um, and so, um, what you can, you don't have to be a developer to make a utility plugin, and it can be good for you um, even if you're not a developer. And we, we've actually put, we've open sourced our utility plugin that we've made, and we put it on our website, and I'll have the the uh, website address there at the end. So you have to wait around for that. It's very exciting. Um, and this is another way of thinking about um, a utility plugin from our lead developer named Tim, and. Uh, this is much more much drier. I'm not going to do the whole thing. But essentially, you're separating your code um, into separate files so that your functions file, this is what our functions files used to look like. Um, they just scrolled on and on forever and had lots and lots of code. And if something broke, it was really hard to figure out what all the code was in there. And chances are there was code that was conflicting with other code and uh, code that you probably didn't we didn't need any more, but no one could really tell that. So what we've done is turned the functions file into a series of files. So at a glance, you can see what files are comprising your, your, your theme. And if, um, if you stop using a plugin, for instance, uh, if we stop using WooCommerce for some bizarre reason, um, you could just remove the WooCommerce uh, File from from the um, utility plugin, and and your site would the site would continue to operate normally. So this is especially helpful if you're a theme developer and you're making themes for for multiple sites and you want to copy some of the some of the code from one site to another. Um, but you know it's not to say that it, it wouldn't be helpful if you were just uh, if if you just have your own site and and you want to be better organized and. Um, you know, be, be conforming to, to best practices. I think a lot of uh, times things with WordPress are about uh, making sure that you are conforming to best practices and, and doing uh, what, 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 what the community is doing um, so that if you need to, to change developer, get another set of eyes, it'll be easy for them to figure out what's going on. So what is the benefit of having a plugin is that we have a settings page now where we can toggle and control all of the elements that are in our utility plugin. So, what you see up top, sorry, I'll stay on the microphone. Um, so at the top is, is uh, the Gravity Forum Honeypots. We use Gravity Forms on all of our sites, and Honeypots is a way of reducing spam. And so with one click, we can activate Honeypots on all of the forms on the site. Um, and then, you know, hidden labels is just another, another option that we generally do on all of our sites. So we, we make that uh, available there. Um, we added a, a function so that we could uh, remove pages from sitemaps, from HTML sitemaps. So if we had thank you pages, we don't want search engines to crawl those because we only want people to go to the thank you page if they filled out a contact form. 
So um, we've done that there. Now all of these things you could do with plugins, um, but we've just chosen to, to be very more efficient with our code. Um, and actually below that you can see we build all of our sites on Genesis, and Genesis has a header and footer scripts area, so that means if you want to add um, a tracking code, Google Analytics, or some other kind of, of uh, web analytics code, they'll often say, put this code in your header, or put this code in your footer. And if you're not a developer, that can be pretty intimidating. And so Genesis has, and some other themes probably do this too, have made special areas where you can just copy, you can just paste your, your code into the header or footer. And so we move that from the Genesis page, which is here, um, to, to this page so that it would be completely theme independent. And um, generally, if you're running a, a framework like Genesis, you're not going to switch from uh, one theme that is Genesis to another theme that's not Genesis. So really, this is really just to be semantic and to really conform to best practices. Um, but hey, nothing wrong with that. Um, so what is the impact of using the utility plugin? It, it separates the theme from the functionality from the design um, in a way that, you know, WordPress does this by default to, to good measure, and this does it to, to an even more, to a greater extent. Um, the second thing is it makes it easier to switch uh, themes, as I mentioned. So um, we had been getting these themes that were just huge because we kept adding functionality to the theme. And then if we wanted to switch themes even to another Genesis child theme, um, when I say themes, I really mean Genesis child themes in my case. If we wanted to switch to another child theme, we would have to move all the code from, from the functions file into the second, the separate, the new themes function file. And um, you know, anytime you're doing copying and pasting, you can not do it very well and cause problems. And uh, that's generally my ammo. Um, and then, if you're an agency like we are, the nice thing about having a utility plugin is that you can uh, use that for, for multiple clients. Or anybody who's building multiple sites can, can use the utility plugin for, for multiple clients. So, in our um, uh, repository, we have, in our, in our Bitbucket uh, area, we have uh, utility plugins for each of our clients that are customized to their, to their needs. So, what can you do with the utility plugin? Um, these are some of the things that we're doing on our sites. Um, because we don't really do blog websites, we do you know business websites, we don't want the dates and bylines on our pages. We want them on the blog, but we don't want them on the About Us page. We don't want, we don't want people to know how old that About Us page really is, and we don't want anyone to know who wrote it because it's really the company. Um, we register custom post types. So we make a lot of custom post types, and that's one of the really nice things about uh, later versions of WordPress is that you can have lots of different kinds of content beyond pages and posts. And so when we do that, we register those custom post types in the utility plugin so that they're, so that they're site specific. Um, and then registering custom taxonomies, which is very similar to the custom post types. Um, and then we have the other settings where you can do things like this. So I don't know how big that actually is. Okay, that's okay. Um, so we hide the labels on gravity forms, for instance, the honeypots I already talked to you about, the uh, pages I, I told you about, and the header and footer, and then uh, the custom meta boxes. Um, so those are really nice. Um, we can we can really customize the experience for editors, which when, when you get a bigger site, that can be really important because people, you know, the 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 line on WordPress is that it's easy to use, but in fact. Um, in, in, in most cases, WordPress is not as easy as it could be to use because people haven't customized the experience for editors. And so one of the things that we try to do is to make uh, the editor's experience um, as, as easy as possible, to make it as intuitive as possible, and to not have extra meta boxes floating around. Um, and then a really cool thing that, that Tim has done is, is made our own shortcodes. So um, it, we, when we start doing things over and over again, uh, Tim will just make a short code for us, and that goes in the utility uh, plugin, and that is uh, a super nice feature. And I showed you a little bit about how this looks. This is a little bit, a little bit more into it. Um, actually, I already went through this. I'm just going to skip over that slide. So, what should you do with the utility plugin? Um, as as I mentioned, I'm not a developer, and so I wanted to do some things with the utility plugin that Tim would not allow us to do. 
and I'm going to tell you what those are now. Um, I wanted to show the featured image on old pages because I find that I think the featured image is a great feature of WordPress. Um, so you know, there's that little box in the corner that that allows you to have a featured image, and it's really good for index pages and, and archives. And I like to show that on the page by default, but out of the box, WordPress does not do that. And so every time we build a new site, I'm like, Tim, come on, can you show the featured image, please? And so finally I said, can you put this in in the utility plugin? He said, no, because it, it's a design feature, and we're separating functionality from design. And so we do not put the uh, featured image in the utility plugin for that reason. So that's, I, I find that to be a good rule of thumb in terms of what goes in the utility plugin. Well, featured images don't because they're design and not functionality. Um, and then anything that could break when you change themes. So, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Mm, I can't think of a good one. Short sure, sure. to me. What? Short. Sure. No, not short. No, not short codes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to the guy who made this presentation. Um, so here's, here's a list that I found online, and I meant to attribute this, but I clearly did not. This is not anything that I take any responsibility for, especially if it's good. Um, but this is a good chart that I found on what should go into a plugin and what should not go into a plugin. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything that jumps out at me. I think we've talked about all of these things, except changing the default for Avatar, but that seems kind of boring. Um, so, a lot of times, a lot of questions that I saw on the internet were, why would you use a utility plugin when you could just add a plugin that, for instance, um, uh, makes, a, makes an HTML sitemap? There are lots of plugins out there that make HTML sitemaps, so why, why did we put that into a utility plugin? And the answer is that we wanted to cut down on extraneous code. So there's, you know, there's this stupid myth in WordPress world that you can't have more than X number of plugins on a site, which is just, we know that that's not true now. But for a long time, there were stupid debates going on, on the internet about how you couldn't have more than 30 plugins or whatever the number was. Um, and luckily those days are, are gone. But that said, um, you don't want to have more plugins than you need. And you don't want to have a big plugin when you're only doing a small fraction of what that plugin does. So we um, have extracted code uh, into the utility plugin so that we don't have to have extra extra plugins and extra code. Um, and uh, that's that's what I have to say about that. Um, so what is our structure? We we have a, a utility plugin that we install on all of our sites and then we're making site specific uh, plugins for each one of our sites. So if a site is using WooCommerce for instance, we'll have site specific WooCommerce code in that utility plugin. Um, whereas if, if the site is not an e-commerce site, we won't include that there. And if, if, the, if the client comes to us and says, can you do some crazy thing? We'll say, yes, we'll do that crazy thing, but we'll put in the utility plugin so that we don't do that crazy thing on all of our sites. Um, and then another really good example is we've started getting into marketing automation, and so we have a lot of API calls that to the marketing automation software that are specific to that client. And, and those, it would be very bad. It, it, would, it would just break and it would, it would just be a waste if we put that in, in all the utility plugins. So we put that in, in site-specific ones. And that's about it. So um, I don't have anything else. Does, it, does anybody have any questions? OK, OK. Yes? Is there a library for these plugins? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, a, a library, say that again? A library to find like the plugins themselves, or do you create them? Or you create some library? Not exactly sure what you mean. You mean, uh, do we? Like, the, are these plugins shared on the WordPress community, or? We, we have not published uh, our utility plugin, except we have put it on GitHub. Um, and it's at forwardjump.com slash utility and plugins. Um, you know, there's actually a very noted plugin developer here, Tobias. Um, if we, if we were having a conversation about how we haven't published plugins to the repository because the support is really so uh, intense, it takes so much time. So we have chosen not to publish 
plugins to the repository. Um, honestly, I would like to publish more to the repository because we, we are we build a lot of plugins, we just don't publish them. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's a good answer. But but this one we are making available. Um, I don't know if we'll support it. Um, <laughs> but but yes, at forwardjump.com slash utility hyphen plugins. And I'll put something on the homepage tonight so that if you don't remember that link, it'll still be there. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, that's true. I can just do that. You're right. You're very smart. Mine should pop up. Oh, I'll just, I'll just do it on mine. I feel bad about using it. Right. And now I'm, now I'm connected. No, I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, okay, I will use it. Is this work for us all over the place? You're very nice. It just happened on this computer. I have another computer that did not happen for that one. Okay, so this site is called Jordy Labs, and this is our oldest client, so it has the most stuff in its um, functions file. Mm. It was here just a minute ago. So you can see here that this is relatively meager. But if we go into the theme, I'm just going to try. Sorry. 
see this is this is a huge functions file, and it has stuff that's like not even relevant anymore. Um, so I think like Genesis has removed these navigation extras like I think a year ago, but we still have it in our functions file. So it's like this this kind of stuff that in an ideal world we would get rid of this, um, but just it's not a huge priority. It's two lines of code, three lines of code to include the the rem. So so we have it. So, so this is an example of one that, that needs, you know, once we have some free time, um, once those damn clients stop calling us, we're going we're gonna to fix this functions file. Um, but until that time, um, I don't know, did that really answer the question? So it sounds like, um, but it sounds like, well, so that's one of your older clients, but it, it sounds like in the new, maybe in the newer sites, starting a couple, so, so many months back, you actually have started farming out stuff into a, into a um, like utility plugin more yes. and more? Yes. So um, we are just redesigning this site for the Boston Teachers Union, and it's going to launch at the end of the month, allegedly. Um, <laughs> I once had a, a boss uh, like 12 years ago, and he said, I've never seen a site redesigned go off on time. And to this day, I've never seen a site redesigned go off on time. Um, but this one, this one really is, is going to go off on time. Here, I'll, I'll show you this because you're next. Actually, let me show you the, the, the live site. This is the live site. It's really old. I thought it was old site. Yes. <laughs> so this is the current site. And so we, we totally just redesigned like, and redeveloped the site from the ground up. So we just started with the Genesis sample theme, which has just no code in it. It's just columns. Um, and, we, and we did this. And Tim, our developer, is really proud of this because this is using the REST API for this media watch. It's very exciting. Um, and so now what I was actually going to show you The child utility plugin for BTU. Ah, here we go. Okay. So here you can see the index is very short. And then So this is for, uh, I suppose, to shockingly, um, different things. And these are the short codes that I was telling you about. So the other day, we were on a call, and we said, wouldn't it be great if we could do blah, blah, blah? And uh, that afternoon, Tim said, here's a short code, so you can do that. And so that's, that's the kind of thing that you can do. Uh, that, it's easier to do in these utility, in utility plugins. I mean, all this stuff, is, it's doable. This is just easier to do. That's your question. You. Yeah. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> so do each one of those folders really make up a like a toggle button in your utility plug program? Your no, program? that's a good question. Um, some of these functions don't need a um, a user option. They just they just go. Um, so, like WooCommerce functionality would be that way. This site doesn't have WooCommerce, but um, if you had some WooCommerce stuff, you might just want that to just go automatically. You actually probably wouldn't want to give uh, an editor or an administrator the option to turn it off because that could have a negative impact on your site. But you do want that to go um, in the utility plugin because um, you need that. You need that to have your site go. So, so you're, it's a good question. So there's there's not a correlation between these folders and and this. And if I was smarter, I would know where that is. I think uh, I don't actually know where that is, um, but I can find out and tell you. So your utility plugin, it, all those folders are comprised in it. Yes. Yes. So this is this is the mean, the, the highest level of the utility plugin, and then 
Um, there's the assets folder with, with the CSS and the JavaScript, and then and then there's the source files, and and, and these are things that are specific to each um, plugin or functionality uh, that we want. And so if we added a new a new plugin, um, so if we added WooCommerce, for instance, then we would want to have a bunch of WooCommerce specific uh, functionality, especially for Genesis, um, because not all of the Genesis themes have WooCommerce functionality functionality built in. It's a good question. Any other questions? Yes. Question. Any code that you do to CSS goes into that folder? You know, for think, no. Or I would say would that two folders? yes, there there is still a, a CSS folder for for the main style. The CSS for the utility plugin is, is for a CSS for those elements that are in within the utility plugin. So, so there is CSS that, that corresponds to the custom post types, and there's CSS that corresponds to the, to the custom taxonomies. So one wouldn't supersede the other, or is there a chance? Or well, it follows it now. It, this is this is where I can only play developer for so long. Um, but it, it follows a, a paradigm that, of, of CSS, that if you have CSS at, at different levels, that, that one will, will supersede the other. Yes. I'm sorry, did that answer your question? Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, I guess I'm wondering, uh, so WooCommerce or some of these other like, forms or they have Honeypots, are they providing you what you need to pull out, or do you have a developer who's looking at say WooCommerce's regular plugin and deciding what to basically take out? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So within within WooCommerce, within let's take Gravity Forms and 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 the um, the honeypots that I was talking about, you can um, Gravity Forms has an option on each form where you can activate the honeypot. And and what we wanted to do was say no, we don't even we don't want to rely on someone. So honeypots are, are, are an invisible way to, uh, to to nab spam to nab bots. So it'll keep bots from being able to submit the form because they haven't activated the honeypot. Uh, and that I, I might have been butchering that. Um, in fact, I, so I think there, in in a normal um, gravity form settings, there there is there is a, a thing for oh no, actually it's in form settings. There's a there's a button where you can toggle uh, gravity uh, honeypots on or off. Here we go. And and so we have we have just done that uh, on every form so that we don't have to rely on on an editor uh, deactivating that um, and, and causing a lot of spam. That's, yes. So if you do do that and then you upgrade plugin, does it overwrite the kind of stuff that you did with the plugin? Uh, it would. It might not. It wouldn't override it, but it might conflict with it, and that's a really good reason to use, you know, good plugins. Like we can, we can be certain that Gravity Forms will not undo the Honeypot feature, or if they do, they'll telegraph it, you know, for a long time, in a in a very good way. Um, so, so we have. I, I think that's an excellent reason to make sure that you're using, you know, top-notch plugins and, and top-notch themes. That because that you know, that absolutely could happen to you. Um, and I think that Tim probably has something written in here that says like if the if the plugin is not act, is is not activated or is not present, you know, don't skip over this code. Which is also another you know best practice when you're when you're doing anything related to uh, to a module to a plugin or you know some other thing that's modular that, that could go away. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yes. One, I know you showed us a design on that Boston Teachers Union. But yep. do you know anything about the server that's hosting it? Yes. Like memory, etc. Yes. If you could fill us in. Yes, I'm very happy to. We have worked with a lot of hosting companies, and we work with Liquid Web exclusively. And we have a virtual, we have a WordPress optimized virtual private server, um, which is just fantastic. And I'm telling you, I don't get any money from Liquid Web. I pay them a lot of money. Um, <laughs> so I'm very happy to tell you this. I have worked with. Just about any any hosting company you could name, including some that are sponsoring these these events, and um, 
they have all steered me wrong at one level or another, and Liquid Web is just fantastic. They have 24-7 support in America, um, and they have, we have super fast um, servers. Um, I think that, that if you're hosting a, um, if you're hosting a commercial site, I think that a, a, a virtual private server is really the best way to go. Um, a VPS, uh, my password situation is not good. Um, <laughs> a, a, a virtual private server is essentially like like Google Cloud or, or, or AW, Amazon Web Services that you're you're just spawning an instance of, 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 of Linux essentially, um, oh, oh, LAMP actually. You're, you're, um, spawning a, a, a LAMP instance, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and and then it can grow as big as you need it to. So we just um, so what we did today, in fact, was we just moved uh, this this site to a different server because we wanted to uh, be able to cloak the IP uh, cloak the um, the host the host record. Uh, so on our local on our local machines, we could have it resolved at btu.org because we want to test some, some um, wildcard redirects. I'm sorry if that was a very technically complicated sentence, so if that doesn't make sense, let me know. Um, and, and so what we did was we spawned a new server. Let's see if oh, I think I'm gonna have to wrap up. Okay, we spawned a new server, and, um, and we'll destroy it in a few days. Um, and, and that's all because it's on a virtual private server, and um, it's fantastic. So if you want to talk to me about the Kudo, I'm more than happy to talk to, them, talk to you about it. And again, I have no financial incentive on this whatsoever. Thank you very much.